Just the two words came to my mind. The impossible. As I was sitting upstairs, stressing about what to preach on, which I do. I'm kind of a stressor. Uh, my wife knows. My sister calls me Uncle Fester. Because, <laughs> I mean, I, I've gotten a lot better in my past than I, than I used to be. But just two words, the impossible, popped up. And I began to search the words impossible. And that's kind of how God speaks to me about a message. Is he throws out a couple of words and a sermon title pops in. And then I have to start digging and figuring out what scriptures to use or things like that. And as I dug into the impossible, it seemed impossible for me to preach this message. <laughs> Every passage of scripture I wanted to use, I couldn't see how I could make it work. So I'm sitting there after an hour or so, and I said, this is impossible. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm going to have to come up with a different title or, or something else. I mean, I got like 20 sermon title names upstairs written down. They pop into my mind all the time. But God said, no, 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 no. You're preaching the impossible to this week. So I said, okay, then it must be possible. <laughs> it, it's got to be possible for me to do this. So I found a passage of Scripture that we're going to look at today. And what this passage of Scripture is discussing is when the young man, the young ru rich ruler comes up to Jesus and says, how do I enter the kingdom of heaven? And he says in the, pra in the passage before, basically, you know, give away all your stuff, you know, pick, leave your family and do the different things that you've got to do and, and, and follow me. And he says, okay, well, I can do some of this. But then in this passage of Scripture, Jesus gets a little more specific. And the man sees it as impossible for him. So let's go ahead and look at this passage of Scripture real quick. Because there is a price to follow Christ. But it is a price worth having, worth giving. Verse 22 reads, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Then his, when his disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looked to them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answered to him, See, we have left all and followed you, Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of His glory, you who have followed Me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for My name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold the inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Through the eye of a needle. Now, sometimes there's things that we want in life. Maybe it's to fit in with a certain group. Maybe it's a certain job. Maybe it's a certain relationship. And we focus like a laser beam on that. And we will do whatever is needed to transform ourselves to get that. I remember when I was in high school and I saw, you know, it was our first time to really come back to America after traveling the world. And, and I was sitting there picking out who I want to be like in school, and I saw the surfer dudes with their long hair, their OP shorts, and their skateboards and stuff like that, and I said, yep. That's the group I want to be. So I had my parents buy me some shorts and get me a skateboard and do all these things. And so I, I began to transform myself into one of them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times this can happen at work. 
This can happen with our families. These situations that we want to be liked. We want to be a part of something. And so we begin to squeeze ourselves into a nook, into a cranny of life. We begin to, like, have you ever tried to put on a wetsuit? You get one leg in, and, and, and you can hardly get it up, and then you got to get the other one. And, 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 and I mean, it, it's a mess. We, we begin to transform ourselves to fit into a future that we may see. Hi. Have you ever made your way into a group, which I did in high school? I was there with all the surfer stoner dudes, you know, <laughs> ditch school, go to the beach, you know, all that good stuff. We thought was good. And then when you get there, you realize it's not cracked up to what it looks like on, from the outside. Now this can happen in churches. You see a click. You work your way into the click. You, you're in there in the middle of, of this group that you thought was the group. And what is going on in that group? There's backbiting. There's fighting. There's... There's gossip. There's all these different things. It's not quite what you expected it to be. So here's Jesus in this passage of Scripture. And He says that, again, I say to you that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. What Jesus is talking about here is He is exposing the true heart of this young man of us. What this does is it brings us to how we really feel about a situation, about this situation, about salvation. As we go into the month of April and we're writing and praying and and praying for salvation for our loved ones, for our friends, for our co-workers, we have to understand that we can't just do it on our own. 